maybe we can steal one of these and use it <laughs> on one of our movies. I'm on my way to uh, the game uh, with the beautiful uh, Crystal Garcia, a.k.a. Super Tromet uh, Asphyxia. And uh, I'm going to try to film some behind the scenes of the game. Uh, hopefully I won't have my film confiscated like happened with Slither. I'll play a little part and maybe we'll learn a little more about the workings of, uh, of a big time movie. Should I take my clothes off, Matt? Uh, yeah, you're gonna put this on. I just need to know your shoe size. Uh, it's uh, eight and a half. Okay, and there's no no t-shirts or anything under that. No. So you want me to wear a t-shirt under it? Or no, there is no. You don't wear anything. Oh, I don't wear anything. But you won't be wearing any socks either. No socks. No okay. Socks. How about underpants? Underpants, you can. Okay, I will leave my underpants on. Okay. What's the uh, deal here? What is what there was there an accent? It looks like a terrible. This line. is like a. This isn't a movie set. This looks. It is, it's, it's a movie set. Later. You're gonna play one of the Genericons in the game Slayers, so you're controlled by the computer. The gaming meets reality in the future. What happens is they put a chip, and you're on the battlefield with live weapons. Now you have a choice. Either one, you can die on a death row, or you can play the game and let someone else control you. If you survive the game 30 times, you are free to go. Since you're controlled by the computer, you're running into a loop right now, and you happen to be running into this garage door nonstop, repeatedly. Okay, Tyler, let me just have you step away for one second. Hey, Tyler. Hey, good to see you. Lloyd Kaufman. And nice though to you see you. you should be walking down the street, you somehow turned, and now you can't do anything but run straight into this door. Okay. Right here. It's funny with the hat, actually. <laughs> I should probably... Background! And action. Shit. 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 I, I think it was very funny how you accentuated the third shit. I think that's good. This was straight before. He did that with his nose. He just yeah. caved it in. Wow. I am. Oh my. We did, what we did to Lloyd's nose? It's okay. Oh. You should have seen the other guy. <laughs> should have seen the other fence. Uh, that was great. That last one was great, actually. Yeah. That was that was rock and roll. It's, it's a movie about uh, hope. It's a movie with a lot of heart, um, and a lot of the hearts are spilled out onto the street, uh, and a lot of the hope is dashed when people are separated into their component parts and left uh, smoked, charred piles of burning limbs. But there is hope in there somewhere. Yes, I got it. There was a cup in the shoe. You want to look? <laughs> really? Uh oh, oh let's go. Cool. So D.P. Eckert noticed a uh, noticed a cup in the shot, and then also there's apparently a difference between the two angles. So uh, D.P. Eckert is suggesting that it be shot again. There's a cup in the frame. I didn't see it, but Eckerhart, who uh, is very meticulous and he should be, that's his job. My job is to be creative and weird. Uh, said that the cup, people are going to watch the cup and not you, Lloyd. I don't believe that for a second. I think they're going to watch you. But uh, I, uh, by good counsel, I'll take it, and uh, we're going to do it again. We're going to make it even better. Uh, action. That's I where mean, you fucked up. Yeah. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Took a lot of acid in the 60s. Uh, basically, this is part two uh, of a shot that we did a week ago. And the first part was our character cable is um, coming up through an alleyway and he turns to shoot one of the bad guys, and as he comes back around, there's literally a flying SUV on fire in front of his face. We shot that part, and now we're gonna pick it up as we switch pan through the other way, and we see the truck sliding down the road, and this opens us up to the battle. This is the first time we see in the movie, holy shit, we're in fucking Iraq. So what do you call that machine? This is an the, Artem. That's what called a what? An Artem smoker. Artem smoker? How do you spell that? A R T E M. Artem Smoker. For the most part, we're putting our actors in peril when it looks like they're in peril. 
and we're blowing vehicles up and we're sliding vehicles down the street and we're really shooting guns because we just feel like there's a visceral experience that you, you know, you're going to feel that in the audience when you sit there, you know. Um, As opposed to adding in muzzle flash. Yeah, it's like, why, why do that? And well, of course we have to do that sometimes, but it's just so much better if you have the guy physically holding the gun that's going off. There's something about the motion, the way he, like, you know, is taking the, the recoil. I play a blue soldier and a sniper. I play a Slayer, a Brown Slayer, but today I'm playing a guard, and we're in the game with uh, Gerard Butler. How much rehearsal on game? Did you, did you get any? Uh... Uh, game was, was the same thing. Uh, we, we had a little bit of time with uh, Jerry Butler, who played Cable, and uh, Amber Valletta, who played Angie. Maybe a couple of days um, of mm -hmm. rehearsal. The rest of the people, John Leguizamo, uh, Kira Sedgwick, Michael C. Hall, Michael Weston, Milo Ventimiglia, um, all of these actors, ludicrous, we had no time. They showed up on the day, uh, they knew their lines, we had a 15 minute conversation, a little football huddle, and then we'd go right into the scene. And, and these guys are professionals. Uh, it would have been a lot more difficult with, with newbie actors, but uh, you know they've been around, they're old stagehands, so to speak, and that, that really helped us out. This is my son, Tyler. He is uh, the uh, up-and-coming star of all Neveldine films and all things Neveldine. <laughs> and the uh, commercial for uh, all tattoos. <laughs> oh, nice. Yes, yeah, so he got uh, tatted up. Mom was very happy to, to hear that they were only temporary. Because we're always inventing new camera techniques and ways to move the camera, we want to use the lightest, coolest cameras out there. So we really got involved and embraced HD. And, and then when RED came, came along, we decided to you know, be the first guys to shoot it. Were we the first guys to shoot a feature with it? I think maybe we were the second guys to shoot we it. We were the first ones to shoot like a big ass feature with it. I, yeah, Because yeah, our feature Soderberg. had a big ass. Filmmaking was out of the hands of sort of like everyday people. So when Easy Rider came out, they took 60 millimeter cameras and ran around on pickup trucks and just improvised it. And they opened up a whole new world of filmmaking to people that never had that uh, access before. And it sort of started a revolution. The quality was not as good of the film. The, quality, the look wasn't as good. But it, was, it had urgency, you know, it, it touched people emotionally and you could tell stories that you could never tell in these big budget movies, right? And it sort of changed the world. Then in the 80s, the same thing sort of happened with digital video. It was the kind of like Dogma 95, Lord Van Trier is here. Suddenly you could take little digital video cameras like that and again, the quality was not that great. It kind of looked like shit, but it didn't matter because you could tell these stories that mattered that nobody could tell in these big if, budget if movies. If the performances were great, the image doesn't matter. That's right, you had a movie. So now along comes Red, and it's the same sort of revolution in terms of price and democratizing film. Like, for the cost of your entire budget for your little low-budget movie, I mean, shoot, you could just buy a Red camera and then own it. You don't need to rent anymore. But the difference is that Red is giving you an image quality that's in excess of what the studios are using. So it's the first time this sort of price point revolution has happened where you didn't compromise quality, actually you're getting better quality. So it's kind of amazing. Like I don't even think the repercussions of Red have really been felt yet. What, do you come from New Zealand to yep. come to the set of the game? And what, what's, uh, what's uh, why you're here? Um, to check out the cameras, because we're going to be using the same camera technology. And um, What's your name? Gareth. And what are the cameras you're here to check out? Uh, the Red camera system. What is the Red camera system? Uh, it's a 4K camera system, which is uh, super high def, uh, you could call it. Um, which, uh, compared to something like a Genesis, the Genesis shoots at 2K, and then uh, this camera shoots at double the capacity on that. You're, you're getting 65 millimeter uh, resolution in a little eight pound body that you can run with, you know, in hot swap compact flash cards. It's pretty crazy. There's a million advantages to it. So Thank we're you. gonna we're probably gonna have you in a wide shot too, just to sort of establish you with a long okay. lens when we do this whole SUV burning down the street. So it's gonna be pretty rad. How are you gonna do that? Uh, we're gonna do it on a tow rig. So you see this line? It's our little hoist line, <laughs> and then we're literally going to really light an SUV on fire and slide it down the street. We have a lot of explosions going, a lot of gunfire, so Lloyd, I'm going to have you put in ear protection, those little squishy things you put in your ears, because we're going to be rising over, way over 12 decibels, for sure.
Bobby? Sure. Yeah. We have a man. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs>